The officials, Jeffrey Anderson, Brian Dorsey, Earl Walton. Top 10 showdown at Mackey Arena. Here we go. The top-ranked Purdue Boilermakers at 13-1, controlling the opening tip. This is going to be a game about certainly toughness, rebounding, but for Illinois, their pick-and-roll defense is going to have to be on it. Braden Smith has really improved in that regard, and they're going to have to corral him. Here's Braden Smith giving it up to the transfer, Lance Jones. And there's Braden Smith taking it inside. Contact, no whistle. That ball never hit the rim. But they still got a three out of it. Lance Jones just before the horn sounded. Boy, just a broken play. First 50-50 ball of the game. Braden Smith comes up with it. And Lance Jones knocks down a big one to start for Purdue. Jones coming off 26 points. And Purdue's win on Tuesday at Maryland. So he is on a hot streak right now. Here's Coleman Hawkins, the veteran for Illinois. Short on the leaner. Braden Smith the other way. Two possessions in. We've seen Coleman Hawkins guard Braden Smith. We've seen cross matches at the other end. And Illinois just falling asleep. Braden Smith finding an easy one. So five to nothing. Illinois driving with Gary A. And he lost control as he ran into Edie. And an early turnover. And that one thrown away, so Purdue gives it right back. Get the feeling, maybe some jitters here. A little bit loose with the basketball on both sides, and teams exchanging turnovers here early. Illinois coming in, ninth in the nation, 11-2, and, and this guy has really stepped up. Marcus Damask, 32 points on Tuesday, and he gets their first bucket tonight. Well, the master of the mid-range right there, and it looks like Purdue is going to try to jump to that high side, especially when they've got a guard like Braden Smith guarding him, almost like an ice where the big is low, but with Damask's size, he can just shoot right over the top. And then Illinois gets a stop, and there's our first foul of the game. And it's going to go against Purdue and Trey Kaufman Wren. Now, Brad Underwood, look, he's done an amazing job at Illinois, but it's a new challenge now without Terrence Shannon with a suspension. His third game out, you lose a guy, Robbie, that averages 22 points a game. No, it's playing like a first-team All-American, and I think that's what makes the last two games all the more impressive. I think Brad Underwood has done a phenomenal job from building chemistry with this team that is full of transfers, certainly some core pieces that are back in Champaign, but the way these guys have played and shared the ball, it has been phenomenal to watch. Good ball sharing here, but that one is off the mark by Luke Goody, who's an Indiana native from up in Fort Wayne. It would be a huge boost for Illinois if he could find that jumper now. Two of his last 13 from three. Kaufman ran off the window, no. Well, you mentioned how key rebounding would be, and Kaufman Wren taking matters into his own hands. Well, he loves that right hand, but he has been a beast on the offensive glass over the last four. He's really gotten to those offensive boards and has kept plays alive. Top of the arc, straight on. Gary A a little strong, and the rebound to Jones. Outlet lawyer to the rim. And it rolls off. There's Kaufman Wren again. Saves it to Braden Smith, but he was out of bounds. So the bucket does not count. He's going every single time. And I think that's one of the biggest keys for both these teams. You, you look at Illinois, 14th nationally in offensive rebound percentage. Purdue sits at 33rd. So both of them are going all the time. And you see Trey Kaufman run. That motor, it's working early. Not only the top two rebounding teams in the Big Ten, two of the top ten rebounding teams in the nation here with these two. Gary A pass deflected and Kaufman Wren takes it. How active has he been early on here? And then Lawyer with a little Euro step on the cleanup. I don't know if you give it to Kaufman Wren or Edie, but it's a bucket. Well, we see it for Illinois with Gary A, but we're seeing it for Purdue. And Edie and Kaufman Wren are so active on the offensive glass right now. Blockouts are mandatory in this game. You have got to find a body. Yeah, Trey Kaufman Red has been everywhere. They're a little sealed that allowed Braden Smith to get to the bucket, and he will head to the line. I thought the in and out dribble, though, was just fantastic from Braden Smith. Throws that defense. The turnovers for Illinois have been a real problem. Purdue getting out, Fletcher Lawyer puts pressure on this defense, and you've got Kaufman Wren, you've got Edie, unknown who gets the tip in, but still, you have got to find those guys because they are there, they've got size, and they are crashing the glass. They did credit the bucket to Edie, so already four different Purdue players have scored. You saw the turnover, you mentioned the turnovers, these teams have so many strengths. If they have a weakness, both of them are actually negative in the turnover margin this year. 
Well, Illinois has not forced turnovers nearly as much. I mean, last year they were a team that could get after you, and they've kind of taken a step back. Think about what Brad Underwood's Illinois teams were like early in his tenure there, where they were so up the line, you know, the pressure it was almost to the point where they were giving up layups because of it. It's a different story and a different team this year for Brad Underwood. Right now they're in a nine-point hole. And knocked out of bounds. Lance Jones falls hard and a little slow to get up. I thought Coleman Hawkins was just fantastic in the win against Northwestern. That's a good job by Hawkins going straight up. Ty Rogers getting all ball. Lance, jo jo Lance Jones just kind of losing his balance there. But I thought Hawkins, the active hands, protecting the rim, he, he really gave the Wildcats fits. Uh, Illinois won by 30 in that game Tuesday against Northwestern. And a rare air ball there from Fletcher Lawyer. That leads to a break. Dane Danger in off the bench. Couldn't handle it. Uh, Justin Harmon on the misfire. And Harmon cutting. Nice feed from Danger for the Dudes. How about Danger running the floor, but then dropping the dime? He gets baseline. Loves that baseline spin. And what about Justin Harmon? He has been a revelation the last two games. Off the basketball, cutting right through there, and Danger finds him. Another one of those transfers for Illinois. Edie with the offensive board. Extra pass to Smith. <laughs> Braden Smith has half of Purdue's 14, and they lead it by 10. Here's Hawkins, Edie with a block. Boy, but the patience, he stayed down on multiple head fakes. Edie does such a good job of not fouling, and Coleman Hawkins getting it sent back. He has 13 more blocks, and he has personal fouls this year. The Zach Edie has been so good. And there's a good shot fake from Braden Smith. He will be at the line when we get back. Boy, it's been all about the offensive glass. Purdue owning it early with five offensive rebounds. That ball is moving, and Braden Smith paying it off from the three-point line. Saturday night, the biggest game is... Illinois, not only are you coming on the road to face the number one team in the land, you can't dig yourself too big of an early hole no, here. You, you certainly can. In the Northwestern game, they shot 62 from the field, 55 from three, and they're off to a 2 of 11 start. I think they've gotten some good looks, some good looks from three, but the only ones that have gone down have been that Damas turnaround jumper and the Harmon cut from the feet of, uh, of Dane Danger. So it has been a bit of a struggle here and certainly you come into an atmosphere like this it can take a little time to adjust we'll see what brad underwood draws up here to try to calm his fighting illini dangerous pass but Harmon able to corral it in the lane little leaner try to tap it back and then Edie cleans it up and he kept braden smith on his back the entire way justin Harmon in total control on that pick and roll once again, just can't get it to go, and the Illini stay cold. And it is 2 of 12 now, and Purdue is already plus 8 on the glass, which certainly Matt Painter loves to see. Four-time Big Ten at Coach of the Year. 19th season now, second, and wins here at Purdue, of course, behind the legendary Gene Cady. Lawyer step through, but Danger rejects it. Shot clock at five. Smith has to go. Edie. And foul. Tried to put it back up and in. There's just only so much you can do to handle 7 4, 300 pounds. Well, especially when you're having breakdowns guarding the basketball. Now that help's got to come over. And you see Danger's coming to block it. Goody's trying his best. And with Edie that big. And he's just going right up over the top. It's easier said than done, but you've just got to root him out of his legs and do the best that you can. But but if Danger's coming over, it's going to be really hard for these Illinois guards to block him out. You mentioned how often he's been to the line. This is there, but he has made 112 free throws this year already. Purdue's opponents combined have made 131. That's an incredible stat. But he misses both. I will say, though, about Zach Eady, he, he has had stretches this year where he has gone ice cold from the line and then found the rhythm. I think back to Maui where he missed six or seven in a row. But his percentage on the year has been tremendous. Careless turnover for the Illini. Mason Gillis in off the bench. But he dragged that pivot foot. And Illinois gets it right back. 
think Mason Gillis is going to be playing a little bit banged up. You'd like to see him just go right up with it. I love Braden Smith throwing it ahead. But you've got Luke Goody. It's not like, you know, certainly he can block your shot, but it's not like you got Coleman Hawkins or Dane Danger breathing down your neck. But where is Illinois going to get their production? Again, Terrence Shannon suspended. He's gone. Average 22 points a game. So other guys have got to step up. Look at where Purdue is guarding Ty Rogers. I mean, they are just backing all the way off them. And now there's going to be physical play inside. And he misses it in the paint. And you understand why Purdue's doing that. Rogers has never attempted a three in his career. Good shot, Bank. Leaning. Crafty from Braden Smith, who already has 10. That's twice now where we've seen Braden Smith getting a line eye defender off his feet, this time stepping through. But they're just using that basketball IQ to steal points. And the Purdue lead swells to a Baker's dozen at 13. Smith got a hand on it, coming over here towards us. And they're going to say it stays with Illinois. Illinois only has two turnovers, but it feels like Purdue has been more disruptive with their defense. There's that shot fake, Braden Smith with the up fake. Got Harmon leaving his feet, and then he's just stepping through. And, and look at Danger. It's so hard to be the help guy because you know he can just drop it off to Edie. Certainly Purdue's effort so far on the offensive glass and defensively has been quite impressive. It was also impressive that you did not, not back up from your broadcast spot there as Braden Smith almost came in our lab. I'm not going to lie, push back a couple feet. Just before the shot clock, or did they get it off? They're going to look at it. I thought he did. Integral to what they're doing. They do wipe that bucket off, so the Boilers up 13 with inside at 13 to go in the half. Ethan Morton in the game. He's got it now. He'll take a three. And he gets the bounce. Oh, wow. Ethan Morton with just two points the last 11 games. The help right there. Illinois content to just let him shoot. That gets all rim and somehow just rolls in. A 9-0 run right now for Purdue. Travel by Hawkins. Everything is going against the visiting team right now. I thought maybe Brad Underwood might take, he looked like he was going to take a timeout, now going to let his team play through it, but these turnovers stacking up for the Illini, they, they just don't look like they're in any type of rhythm offensively. Again, it's a team coming in that average over 12 turnovers a game, so they've had some struggles. Morton again! Oh, oh boy, wow. Gillis fell hard, he hit his head. That will take us to the under 12 media timeout, and they will check on the Purdue senior. Guy gets a sack. You go. Sacked you very much. What else? Sack of all hey, You talk about Purdue, and they've got so many guys back, but he used to start for a few years, Rob. Now he's being asked to come off the bench. That's not an easy role to accept sometimes. Well, I think that both these teams have done an outstanding job with their role definition. Whether that's Brad Underwood getting some of these new guys to understand what they need to do, or even looking at Purdue with that four spot. Caleb Burst has played a ton of minutes at Purdue. Mason Gillis, same deal. And, and those two guys with Trey Koff and Wren really split time at the four. So you, you just you look at these two teams and you have a group of guys who are willing to give it up for the greater good Hawkins lays it in uh, So finally, maybe that'll help Illinois get into a rhythm and I slipped there by Coleman Hawkins Caleb first a little bit aggressive getting out on that hard hedge and Hawkins just slipping right to the basket And on the bottom of your screen number three for Illinois Marcus Damas guarding number 55 for Purdue Lance Jones They were four-year teammates together at Southern Illinois and now they go against each other Trey Kaufman ran in the lane. That's a big time pass by Braden Smith right there. He comes off the ball screen. He's got all that attention. Hits the roll man. And anytime you get Kaufman Wren going to that right hand, good things can happen. I think this is a strange matchup for these two. <laughs> it's got to be bizarre, yes. But it, it is fun for us to watch. Two guys that have spent a ton of time together. In four years with the Saluki program, so they know each other well. Good finish inside by Luke Goody. Well, Illinois may be finding some sort of rhythm off the basketball. It's back-to-back -back good cuts. This time Goody just rubbing his man off the passer, and Coleman Hawkins delivering. And Goody, who played in this state a couple hours from here at Fort Wade, Indiana, at Homestead High School. 
You can see just how long Coleman Hawkins wants to stay with Braden Smith. They're trying to get the ball out of his hands and make Coffin Wren make plays. And he misses that little 14-foot push shot. Gary A. Dumps it down into Hawkins. Skip to the corner. Harmon open. Yes. And there's the first three of the night for Illinois. Boy, that's been Justin Harmon's spot. He just killed Northwestern from that left corner. And Coleman Hawkins so good with that skip pass. He's seeing right over the top of the defense. Not much air under the pass. It's super hard for that help side to get back and contest that shot. Now, Harmon last two games, 38 points. He's really given Illinois a shot in the arm off the bench. That was too hot to handle. And a Purdue turnover by Lance Jones. Caleb first guarding. You can see Ethan Morton just kind of cheating his way over. There's the skip pass. That thing's on a frozen rope. Hard to recover. Looks like Purdue maybe got their signals crossed in how they wanted to guard it. I, I think Ethan Morton thought that first was going to jump to that top side, and he was ready to come over and double. Zach Eadie's still on the bench here for Matt Painter. Hawkins lines it up. Knocks it down, and Illinois starting to get in rhythm. Well, Coleman Hawkins is playing so, so well right now. He said it earlier, five straight games and double figures, 44% from three in that stretch. And you put him in that pick and pop, that gives traditional five super, super problems. Little 8-0 run right now for the fighting Illini. Coffin red, nice scan. And you know what for him, he goes to that left shoulder so often that even if he shoots it with his right hand, getting back to that right, it, it, it's going to pay dividends. The defense sitting on that middle. But on the other side, Kaufman Wren picks up, picks up his second foul. This is just a tough guard. First trying to handle the ball screen, then get back. Coleman Hawkins shooting that pick and pop so well. We saw it in the Maryland game. He actually did spin back to his right shoulder and then pivoted back to his right hand. Just was not comfortable with the left, but still scoring it with the right on that play. Shaking his head. He's about to come out of the game after picking up that second personal. He's been active. Offensive glass and six points here early. Yeah, he really helped set the tone for Purdue in those first couple of minutes. Here's Quincy Garrier, fifth-year senior transfer. He's been around the block. Oregon the last two years after two years at Syracuse. And Zach Eady returns from Matt Painter. How about the fact that Quincy Garrier had two double-doubles in his two years at Oregon, and he's already got four this year? He has been so good for Brad Underwood and company. And again, I've said it several times, with Terrence Shannon out, it's a much bigger role for him. Yeah, no, no doubt about that. But they've raved about his leadership. Even before you know, Terrence Shannon's suspension, they, they were talking about how good he was for the locker room. It's the guy that they've brought in and has elevated that chemistry. Drive inside off balance. Edie trying to clean it up, but they're going to say a foul on Purdue. And Zach Eady. But the last couple of games without Shannon, here's some of those guys that have stepped up to mask Harmon, Hawkins, and Gary, eh, Robbie. Well, they've all had to increase that workload. Certainly, Damask, we've seen his usage go way up out of the post. Harmon as a catch and shoot threat. Coleman Hawkins, that pick and pop. And then Gary, eh, kind of a jack of all trades. There's Hawkins. Short, but look who's there. Oh, wow. Gary. Johnny on the spot. He's one of those guys that you've got to check out every time. And with that stunt, it makes it tough to get back. Mason Gill is concerned about that pick and pop. But then Gary getting to the rim. And now that's two quick fouls on Zach Eady. Wow, what a big development with still eight minutes remaining in the first half. The reigning national player of the year is going to head to the bench with two personals. It's something that he has done so, so well this year. Avoiding that early foul trouble. It's a tough call, but I think when your base is that wide, you are putting yourself at risk to be called. And it's a play where he gets tripped. Tough one for the National Player of the Year. Caleb first replaces him, and he grabs the rebound. Three on two. Well, Heidi thought about it. And then take it away. The other direction. Goody kicks to Hawkins. 
corner three off the mark, but then a foul crashing the glass. Damask will head to the line as we head to immediate timeout. Well, it was all Purdue on the offensive glass early, but that pendulum's starting to swing. Now Illinois making plays. Gary going up and throwing it down. Certainly Gary, but those guys can take advantage when it's on the offensive glass, in the post. You know, you run this booty ball offense that we saw so much. And those are Brad Underwood's words, not mine. <laughs> um, we saw it at Penn State last year with Jalen Pickett. And with Illinois' personnel, the, the matchup game has worked so well. So I, I think now you, you, you look to attack because that rim protection certainly is not the same with Zach Eady over there on the bench. And a 16-point lead has dwindled down to five. Pretty impressive response from the Illini. This building was going, and they weathered that surge. 65th consecutive sellout here in West Lafayette. Smith, short. But the mask really altered that, that release. That contest really well done. There's Dre Gibbs Lawhorn, who was actually originally a Purdue commit, decommitted, and now a freshman of Illinois, number two. Hawkins, great pass, Gary A. all alone. They got the pick and roll, and then Purdue's help side defense. Fletcher Lawyer, Braden Smith, they get caught sleeping. Gary A. against Northwestern, killed them with the cut, and they're just making himself available at the rim. Almost 20 points a game over his last five for Gary A. Gillis dials up a three straight on. That goal of a place action for Mason Gillis. Whether it's Zach Eady, Caleb first rolling, that's right in his real house. Now five of his last eight from three. He's locked and loaded from the top of the key. Robbie, you and I were here last year when he hit nine threes and a win over Penn State. Thanks a lot, Michael Stewart, Gary. 27-21 <laughs> is the Purdue lead. Gibbs Lawhorn step back off the mark and a rebound comes down to Gillis. Gillis thought about it. First will take it, a rare three for him. Offensive rebound on the reload. Lawyer, yes. We, we've just seen both these teams at times really struggle to close down the defensive glass. It, it's going to be the ball game here. And there Purdue with a second chance opportunity. Fletcher Lawyer getting it done. But Goody with a huge answer back in his home state. Purdue with a miscommunication there. Fletcher Lawyer, I think that's supposed to be a switch. You get hung up and that's a wide open one for Lou Goody. His third consecutive start in place of the suspended Terrence Shannon and a big three there for Illinois. And a foul is going to go against Illinois. That's a here. Uh, Coleman Hawkins. Take a, take a look at Gary here. He's so active as a cutter. You got two on the basketball on the ball screen. Nice little pocket pass, and you can see Fletcher Lawyer. He gets caught ball watching. When you do that, Gary is coming right by you. Nice pass by Hawkins. Solid possession from the fighting Illini. Hawkins getting a breather right now, but yeah, he and Braden Smith of Purdue, they were going back and forth with a few words. Smith, little two-man game, and a foul on Danger will send Kaufman Wren to the strike. And Kaufman Wren has been incredibly effective as a roller here tonight. Brayton Smith doing a nice job with that pocket pass of finding him. Danger in the drop. There's the body. Zach Eady in foul trouble. This offensive spark from Trey Kaufman Wren coming at the right time. Strider, after coming off the bench last year as a freshman, and he's having a nice game tonight. Seven points and a couple of rebounds. And they say that Trey Kaufman Wren absolutely dominates the team lounge ping pong table. <laughs> All these programs now, they've got these very nice lounges for the players to hang out in, but no one can beat Kaufman Wren on the ping pong. I heard he's claimed like 75 and out. Yes. He like says he's a, never lost. That's a Muhammad Ali record. <laughs> Damas just trying to back down his former teammate Lance Jones. You can see Purdue just sitting on that. Lance Jones is waiting to jump to that top side, and that big's coming over. 
Too tall for Danger, and Jones intercepts it. Great pass. Almost a beautiful finish by Heidi. Now Illinois running. Harmon kicks. Gary A drives. And taps it back home with the right hand. I saw Gary A play twice at Oregon last year. Once in the NIT. Actually three times. Once at PK85, once in the NIT, and once in the game against Houston. And I just feel like his level of aggressiveness is totally different this season. And he is showing it tonight. Seven points, four rebounds. Off balance, no for Braden Smith. Well, well, unfortunately, you get picked off like that. Braden Smith has been so good with that little pull-up. And here's where Damask likes to operate, trying to back his way down. There's that double. I just wait on the baseline side. Goody, short. Purdue the last four minutes with Zach Eady on the bench with two fouls. Gillis from 18. And a little strong. Another offensive rebound, though. You said it, both of these teams active on the glass. Wow. There you go again. And finally, Jones, a third time's a charm. I mean, Trey Kaufman Lynn is playing harder than everyone else on the floor. That ball goes up. What an effort to get out there, tap it to a teammate, and Lance Jones with the layup. Gary A in the paint. Short. Boy, a bucket here, and the roof might come off this place. Oh, boy. Timeout, Illinois. Ben, what we have seen over the last couple games for Illinois. If you're tracking it home, that's the third time that Robbie has said booty ball, and it's not in remission yet. Brad Underwood is the one that coined the term. So I know. It's, and it's late on a Friday night and we're on cable, so everything's good. <laughs> Pass inside, but that is wide of Hawkins and out of bounds in Illinois. Now has six turnovers here in the first half. The first top ten matchup inside this building since way back in 2010. Highly anticipated matchup between these two teams. See Illinois just switching all those screens on the baseline. Back gamble there by Luke Goody. And that's a foul on Goody. Well, since we're talking so much about booty ball, here you go, Rob. Here's your definition. Is this the Webster? <laughs> this is yours. <laughs> this is the Hummel definition. Put this on me. Yes. You know, we, we've just seen these Illini guards, whether it's Damask, it could be Garrier, it could certainly be Coleman Hawkins. Just kind of dribble into a post up and only really get your game on. That's a way to impress your friends at parties. <laughs> Has to bust that out. <laughs> Kaufman Wren continues his nice night as he hits the first free throw. Well, Purdue had the surge, got up 16. Illinois closed the gap, and now Purdue all of a sudden expanding it back to 12 points here. Pretty impressive response from Purdue with Zach Eady on the bench. Craig Kaufman Wren's been a big part of it. How about his night from the foul line? Perfect. And that, that's a a 50% foul shooter. And Edie's been over there since the 803 mark. He only has two points. Garrier, another strong take to the rim. That's big boy basketball by Quincy Garrier. I mean, just a shot fake to get Mason Gillis a little bit off balance, and it is straight line to the rim. Shot blocker coming over. But that was not hashtag booty ball. That was <laughs> just a, a yeah. drive. Okay. Well, Garrier has nine points there in the first half. Braden Smith in the lane, up and under, but had it knocked out of bounds. Now Hawkins, Coleman Hawkins is saying that went off of Braden Smith, but the officials say no. It kind of looked like Smith just lost the ball, and unless it got knocked out of his hands. I... Yeah, that's, oh, yeah. That's off Braden Smith. Well, a break for Purdue. They'll keep it with 14 to shoot.
Lance Jones driving on his former teammate DeMass, but he can't get it to go. Illinois basketball. Pretty good defense there by Marcus DeMass. You know, both of these guys are so experienced. They played four years together in Southern Illinois, so a lot of games between these two guys. And they're, they're chirping at each other right now. <laughs> Lance Jones saying, I think that was a foul, and DeMass saying, no, it was not. <laughs> they're having fun out here, though. I think the Saluki faithful in Carbondale, Illinois, say, man, it would be nice to have those yeah, two on our roster. Right there. There. And certainly, Illinois and Purdue happy to have them. Inside strips. Braden Smith took it away. Gillis, no hesitation, and he buries the three. It's just such a tough guard, especially in transition. That roll and replace, it's Gillis again. But you've got to be in for the tag, and that's why Gary is just a tad late for that contest on the three. Purdue, 7 of 10 from outside the arc. Hawkins fouled outside, and he'll head to the line. Well, Purdue in transition, securing the defensive glass here, a little strip from Braden Smith. And this drag ball screen, and you're trying to get back, here's the screen, there's the roll. And that's such a tough ball for Quincy Garrier, who is the tag man. That ball's going away from you, you got to be in. And Mason Gillis continuing to smolder for Purdue from three. We just showed the replay of that foul call, and you heard what 15,000 inside Mackey Arena thought of it. It's the second foul on first, and now both Edie and one of the backup bigs get him first on the bench for two person. Hawkins now has seven to get Illinois back within 12. Inside, Coffin Rand had position, and he's bumped by Gary. He just did his work early. And he ducked in there. Quincy Gary out of position. And off the screen, just a bullet in there. Really nice pass here. Fletcher Lawyer, that's. On time, on target, but because Trey Coffin Wren gets that position early, he can just turn and go to finish at the basket. I think if you're Matt Painter, you would say, hey, reigning national player of the year is going to go out with eight minutes left. You're still going to be up 13 against the number nine team in the country. He would take that. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Especially with the run that Illinois put together. And they got back in this game. Edie went to the bench with two, and this lineup with Trey Coffin Wren, certainly Mason Gillis. Playing some good minutes. Braden Smith kind of orchestrating everything. Warm round of applause for the redshirt sophomore from Sellersburg, Indiana. from the left wing, but Purdue fumbles it out of bounds. Heidi and Smith going after the basketball. Shot clock will reset to 20, so Illinois cannot hold here for the final shot. Dre Gibbs Lawhorn, who is, as I mentioned, from Lafayette was a one-time Purdue commit that ended up going to Illinois and got a few boos as he checked into the game. Purdue was a little discombobulated with who they're guarding right now. <laughs> I think they finally got it sorted out. Maybe they did. Yeah. It's dicey. Purdue fouling there with 17.7 remaining. Lance Jones trying to steal it, but instead it's the 17 foul on Purdue. That's just a gamble you cannot take if you're in the bonus. You're going to play that out and 
Let's see if you can close down the defensive glass and have the last shot. You can really tell when they show the replays here at Backy Arena. <laughs> the crowd, what they think the crowd lets you know their thoughts. Yeah, they, they give instant feedback. No students on campus. Classes don't start until the 8th, but of course still a sellout here at Mackey Arena. And DeMass coming off that 32-point performance Tuesday in the win over Northwestern. Knocks down the free throw. He now has five here in the first half. Talk about killing a team slowly. I mean, it was like a slow death of mid-range pull-ups. 11 of 15 from the field. He just plays at his tempo. I mean, it's so hard to speed him up. And they absolutely dominated Northwestern, of course. Northwestern, the only team that has defeated Purdue this year. That was on December 1st. Final seconds of the first half here. Jones. Off the dribble, wow. and he's going to get three free throws. And Coleman Hawkins is asking for a flop, and I mean, he literally ran over Lance Jones. Let's get another look at it here, Robbie. I mean, you've got to give him space to come yeah, down. you got to let him land. That's, that's a foul every time. It's the first foul for Coleman Hawkins, but now three free throws here for Lance Jones. I mentioned he had a great game Tuesday in their win at Maryland, 26 points. He was also great on the defensive end, guarding Maryland star Jameer Young. They ran him off of about a million screens in that game. He, he's relentless. Gives this Purdue team some bursts that they didn't have last year. A defensive bulldog and certainly someone that is not afraid to push the tempo. He is the only transfer for Matt Painter this year, Lance Jones. And he gives Purdue a 15-point lead. This 1.9. Hawkins. I don't even think he got it off. It does not matter. So Purdue got up by 16. The lead. And these two schools separated by just 91 miles. And Illinois, when going on the road against the number one team, they've never won a game in program history. 0-8. And, and they've got some work to do here in the second half. Edie guarding Ty Rogers again. He's like a full-on help man. And they got their signals crossed, and boy, that's a lot of contact there. I'm surprised that wasn't a foul. But the whistle goes against Illinois. They call it a travel there on Ty Rogers. We saw in the first half, Rob, but with Rogers out there, they are basically laying about 10 feet off yeah, of him. And they're Trey Coffin, Ren, and Zach Eady. It looked like just got a little miscommunication on the switch. But they're going to just rover off him and it'll be an all time help man. Coffin, Ren missed it. There's Eady, though. He's at the final eight minutes with those two fouls, already making an impact. And what a night Coffin, Ren is having 14 points. What a use of the shot fake. Coleman Hawkins just going straight up, trying to affect these shots at the rim. Trey Coffin, Ren wise with the fake and just uses that strong right hand. Marcus Damask, another guy that Illinois could stand to get going, and there he's able to draw the contact. He'll have two free throws. Zach Eady not taking long to make his presence felt. They're going right into him. Kaufman Wren doesn't get it to go the first time. The offensive glass once again. And here's that shot big. Hawkins coming over. Nice play from Trey Kaufman Wren. Utilize that fake. Edie only two points because of the long time on the bench. He does have those seven rebounds. But Kaufman Rim really, as we said, stepping up. He averages less than seven a game, but with 14 already. I, I think this is his best game of the season. Just the, the complete effort he's given. It's been an every play type deal. As Damask knocks down a couple at the line for Illinois.
Royer getting to the elbow, then dropping it down, and there's Edie in the lane. Too much to handle for Coleman Hawkins. How about that interior passing right there? You got Trey Kaufman Wren. He's on that block. Edie's got great position, and Kaufman Wren finding the big fella. So now he's got four points. Guy averaging 23 in Zach Edie. And Goody on the baseline, short. It just it feels like Illinois is playing four on five in the half court right now with Ty Rogers being guarded by Edie. And Jones with a tough finish down the lane. That's where he's excelled this year. 64% from the field in transition. He's short of 1.5 points per possession. He has been excellent in showing the afterburners right there. It was a Zach Eady rebound that led to that break, and that was Zach Eady's 1,000th career rebound. He's just the second at Purdue ever to hit that mark. Joe Barry Carroll, the all-time rebounding leader here, the other to do it. Illinois, though, able to get a bucket on the lay-in by Rogers. Still Purdue by 17. Eady, kick out to a wide-open Jones. There's Kaufman Wren again. He has owned this game just by playing hard. I mean, he is refusing to be blocked out. 6 9 two, 30, and he's using every bit of that frame tonight. Look at where Edie's guard. He is just the all-time help man. That's quite a help man to have. Yeah. And in the lane, so the mask able to get it to go down. Where if you can get him the ball in the middle of the floor, he certainly has the size advantage on Lance Jones. Just takes his time, goes right up over the top. Maybe that's one of those things. Illinois with some pro style concepts. Post him at the middle and let him go to work. The mass now in double figures with 10. Kaufman Red, who else? And Gary is still just sitting on that left shoulder, but it doesn't matter. He's so good at still getting what he wants. Already at a season high with those 18 points. Goody catch and shoot, yes. And a timeout taken after the three to get it back down to 16 points. Come back to basketball, by the way. Thank you. It's good to be back. Good to see you again in the Gucci tie. <laughs> oh, you're funny. Edie try to dump it inside. Kaufman Wren is bumped and fouled. And Kaufman Wren has had his fingerprints all over this game, sitting on 18 points, got fouled there by Gary. And when Matt Painter was talking this summer about how he, he envisioned Trey Kaufman Wren and Zach Edie playing together, th this has to be what he was thinking when it's at its best. But both these guys just so effective playing off one another. The whistle going the other way. Well, it'll be interesting to see as Big Ten play continues to unfold how that tandem works for Purdue. Obviously, a lot of things have been working this year for the number one team in the land. But I think the beauty is, depending on the matchup, you know, tonight it's been Trey Kauf and Wins now. And Mason Gillis has given them some, some good minutes as well. Other times it will be Caleb first, but I just think Matt Painter will rotate through those three guys and see who's got it going on any given night. And credit those three for buying into that concept. Hawkins... Fantastic pass. He just lost that going up, did Rodgers, but he's able to save it. And Goody short on the triple. It's been a tough night for Ty Rodgers. That's a great cut. Looked like it was going to be a jam. Instead, Purdue looking to grab their largest lead of the night. Good kick out. Jones on the low. Yes. Brayden Smith it is so calm, cool, and collected. When he comes to a jump stop, he's not panicking. He, he's just pivoting to find his way to get it to Edie. And Illinois is selling out. Lance Jones making a pay. Well, I know there's still 15 and change left, but you sense this is a little bit of a danger zone right now for Illinois. Smith leading the charge, but Lawyer cannot handle it. Top 10 showdown here in West Lafayette. Number one against number nine in the 196 all-time meeting between these two stories. 56% from the field. Illinois had a hard time getting stops. And they need to find somebody on this end. Damask leads all fighting a line with 10 points. 
Hawkins driving, affected by Edie, and he grabs the rebound. Even there, Hawkins has the advantage in Edie's length and size. He just stays in the play. It's a tough guard for him, but that's a great contest. Well, that might have been a travel, yeah. You only get two steps, Zach. And a walk there for Edie. This, this is a good action by Illinois. You get Hawkins popping back, and look at Edie just staying in there to contest the shot and then closing that down with the defensive board. Backdoor, Garrier, patient, and he lays it up and in. I think Quincy Garrier is as good as a cutter as anybody in this league. In the last couple games, he gets off the basketball. He is so good at finding open areas. And he's now in double figures with 11. He's the fifth-year senior. Speaking of cutting, Gillis on the weak side. Illinois coming over with that post trap, but there is nobody home. Mason Gillis cutting to the rim, and Edie finding him. Mason Gillis now with eight and efficient three of four from the floor. There's a good take by Marcus Damas. Interesting to see Purdue kind of switch on some of these ball screens. There, Damas got the match if you want, and he blew right by you. And Damask, what a scorer he was at Southern Illinois. Over 1,600 points there in basically three and a half seasons. Edie, yes. And I just don't know how you're going to stop that. Hawkins giving up so much size. Damask showing the double, but then getting back the lawyer. And it's just one-on-one -on -one coverage. Well, Illinois has got a couple buckets on this hit, but they haven't been able to stop Purdue on the other side of the floor. Hawkins, good shot fake, and that leads to Damask with an open 18-footer. Pinballs around, taken by Harmon. Damask again. They just kind of blew a tire there going that way. But how about Goody? He can't get a goal. Said it at the top of the broadcast, but two of the best rebounding teams in the country here with these two going head to head. And Edie starting to get into a rhythm. And Purdue is just flexing their muscles down here. And you can see Illinois has no answer defensively for what they're bringing. Speaking of that rebounding, Purdue is plus 13 on the glass tonight, and there's a turnover for Illinois. Lawyer with a kick out, NBA range! And Jones left it short, and then a foul on Purdue. That's the third on Zach Beatty. Beatty is generating so much attention. You're going to see a nice little back screen here from Lance Jones, and there's the double. Gary A going to get screened. He sees it late. Now it's too late for Coleman Hawkins. Nice patience from Mason Gillis. And Edie picking up that third will get a breather here. on a dime, had it stripped. And they reset with the mask. Hawkins, a little bit of a size advantage here on Morton. The mask step back, no. Knocked out of bounds, Purdue basketball. Media timeout here at Mackey Arena. Coleman Hawkins' point was that he thought the ball, I think, it hit out of bounds before it did contact his leg, but Jeffrey Anderson felt otherwise. And Purdue right now with their largest lead of the night at 21. And that's going to be a foul against Illinois. Brad Underwood, his team, 11-2. Their only losses to very good teams, Marquette and Tennessee. But the loss of Terrence Shannon to that indefinite suspension obviously changes the complexion of this team. But they're 2-0 without him. But running into a bit of a buzzsaw here tonight. Oh, dangerous pass. And nobody was looking. Of course, well as Illinois shot the ball the other night, it's just the ball has not gone in the basket. It's 34% from the field, 30% from three. 
go on the road. You put up those types of numbers, combine that with the offensive rebounding, the turnovers, and it's, you're just you're not going to win road games like this if you're playing the way that they have. You get a good look here, and that one drops down. Third three of the night for Luke Goody. It's been so interesting to see the offensive rebounding pendulum just kind of swing in both directions here. Both teams so effective at getting on the offensive boards. Just kind of taking turns here. And Luke Goody taking advantage. Trying to keep Illinois in this thing. Morton will let one fly. He's short on the shot. But a foul on the rebound is going against Illinois. And so it gives Lawhorn. He just think Purdue's depth is so impressive. And they, they just can bring waves of bodies. Certainly guys that, that can make plays. And Braden Smith and Fletcher Lawyer. And he got the National Player of the Year on top of that. And there's a turnover. But I mean, you're right. Edie only has eight. Yes, he sat with the fouls. Lawyer only has three points, but yet you've got Pop and Wren stepping up. Jones has yeah, 13. It's been the supporting cast for Purdue. Each team with nine turnovers now. alley -oop. Now we know Gary A can do that. Illinois went through that play at shoot around. And Purdue with that back screen just not talking it out. Pop and Wren gets caught up with Caleb first. And... Quincy Garrier hanging on rims. And Matt Painter not very happy if Izzo turned this around. And well, the answer is yes, he can. Well, there's going to be a lot of cannibalization in the Big Ten this year. There's only two remaining unbeatens, and we're only here in early January. Illinois 2-0 and Wisconsin 2-0. and Everybody else has at least one loss. I'm Brad Underwood in that timeout. I'm preaching last year's game. The Illinois team all the way back from 24, but the offensive glass... Just has not been the Illinois. That's just can't give that up. Turns into a, just following a shot and an easy layup for Smith to now have a dozen. The mask couldn't get it off over Zach Eady. Now the shot clock at five. He's going to drive on the big fella. Wild shot, but he got it to go. Oh, I mean, you've got Zach Eady right there. You've got Kaufman Wren coming over and going vertical. It's a big time play from Marcus Damas. Get to the middle. Getting back to that Big Ten discussion, though, everybody except for Illinois and Wisconsin already has at least a loss. How do you see this playing out? It, obviously, Purdue is the heavy favorite to win the league. No, I, I think that is probably the, the easiest thing to deduct from the conference right now. The Purdue is, is certainly the clear-cut favorite. And then it's just a toss-up, right? I think it's Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan State, and Ohio State kind of in the mix for 2-3-5. For and I would throw Nebraska in there at, at 6. I think they would have a Certainly had an impressive start. Really controlled Indiana. Yeah. In the game the Coleman other night. got it going. Juwan Gary has been great. But, but even without Terrence Chandler, I think Illinois still could be the second-best team in the Big Ten. Oh. Bad pass by Edey and a turnover. Right now, although it's very early, but our resident bracket expert, Mike DeCourcy, has seven teams in from the Big Ten at the moment. These numbers will change between now and March. <laughs> That's fair to say. But for Purdue... Number one team in the country. They've got eyes on bigger things than just winning the Big Ten again. Of course, they've had a couple frustrating exits in March, and they're hoping to rectify that situation this year, but a long way to go between now and then. Ethan Morton picks up his first. And they've heard all the talk, and Matt Painter knows the discussion about not having been to a Final Four and the frustrating exits, but this team is certainly built for a chance to win a national title, no question about it. Their guard play, the rebounding, Edie, there's just a lot to like about what Purdue does. Top five in, in offense, top ten in defense, in terms of efficiency. You look at the teams that make runs, go to the Final Four and win the national title. Purdue has that type of profile.
They already have three top ten wins this year, this Purdue. It's been a tough schedule. Looking for number four here, and that'll help. Edie is a double figure. There's just nothing that Coleman Hawkins can do about that. Purdue is as good as any team in college basketball with those top-of-the-key post-entry feeds. There's no help side. You can't double the post. And Edie's just taking little practice hooks out there with that right hand. Hawkins got a good look. Nice shot by Harmon on the glass. And then a put back by Quincy Guerrier. And that's the fourth foul on Zach Eady. Give credit to Illinois because they have kind of just hung around. And they are still very much so in this game. Guerrier getting Eady off his feet, getting some contact. And what a strong finish to go right through him. Well, it was with 8.03 in the first half that Zach Eady went to the bench with two fouls. Now with 8.01 in the second half, he goes to the bench with four. Gary A leading Illinois with 15 points. He's also chipped in six boards. I love his game. I mean, he can get to the rim. He's a great cutter. He plays hard. He's a versatile defender. That's a great pickup by Illinois in the transfer court here. His third school, two years at Syracuse, then two at Oregon, and now finishing in Champaign. Brad Underwood recruited him heavily out of high school. That looks like Purdue just going straight motion here. I don't see that very often. Matt Tanner has gone heavy to sets. Jones able to draw the contact against Harmon, and he will be at the line when we get back. Purdue in command. At Jersey Mike's, they slice your sub right in front of you. Watching that always takes me to my happy place. And Lance Jones hits the first of two. Probably 5 of 15 from long range. I'm not saying they need to start chucking threes, but they're going to probably have no, to knock They're going to have to make stops. some shots, get some stops. And certainly, the offensive glass has been so good to Purdue. They're going to have to rebound defensively, but the three ball is going to have to be the deal here. And right on cue, that one rolls around and down. So now four threes tonight. Purdue has not navigated some of these screens great. And just the communication has not been there. Luke Goody popping and... Purdue just, that's, that's one of those where they can't give that up. And he's four of seven for deep, and on the other end, it's number four, Trey Kaufman Wren now with 20. Great read by Trey Kaufman Wren. Just reading his man, seeing that he's high and slipping it to the rim. Damas driving and taking it right at Kaufman Wren. Back-to-back -back defensive possessions for Purdue where the communication has just not been there. And Illinois able to take advantage. You mentioned it, though, and Brad Underwood said it to us at shoot-around, that Illinois had a comeback like this against Purdue last year, where they surged late, but Purdue would hang on. We are only up 14. And this has felt like maybe it's ballooned to more, but Illinois is still hanging around. The lead has been as large as 21 here in the second half. Goody this time inside the arc, and he has two at the line. Finding some offense here, and that's that's guard to guard. That's Heidi and Lance Jones. That's just as simple as yelling out switch and executing on that. And it's those same two once again. Now you got Damask burning it to the rim. The breakdowns on two plays and back-to-back -back buckets for Illinois. And now Goody getting him back within 13. Lou Goody, I mentioned from northern part of the state, Fort Wayne. Homestead High School. And his dad, Craig, played football at Indiana. His uncle, Trent Green, a lot of people know that name, also a quarterback at Indiana and in 12 years in the NFL. And he gets them both. So the gap closing here at Mackey. Braden Smith, and he throws it away, and then picks up a foul. So the momentum is shifted here to the fighting Illini. Boy, that's 
the seventh foul in Purdue. So Illinois is going to walk 94 feet, and now you got a one and one. You talk about compounding your mistakes. You have the turnover, but now just get back. So yeah, the 17 fouls, of course, Zach Eady on the bench with four fouls, and still almost six minutes left. This is far from over. And it has been a group effort for Illinois. Three guys with 16, and now Matt Painter sits in the comeback. He's going to go ahead and put Eady back in here. Not wasting any time. Shows the trust that he's got in Zach Eady to play with four fouls. And a lot of times you'll see coaches wait to that four-minute media timeout. But I think Matt Painter sensing the urgency here. <laughs> that went in and out. Well, Eady in his career, now a senior in his fourth year, he's gotten better every season at not fouling. But it's been an issue here this evening. I think that for Purdue, this ball has got to go into the big foul. He's being fronted in there as Edie by Garrier. Jones. Oh, Coleman Hawkins thought he had a clean block. We better be careful. He has been incredibly demonstrative on some of these calls here tonight. It looked like they had Lance Jones in just a really tough place. There's certainly some contact on the wrist. You can see this one right here again. He's coming over as that help defender. I think he got the ball first and then maybe grazed. Oh, I, I agree with that. Yeah. I think it was ball and then it was on. And Lance Jones back to the line where Purdue has been good tonight. Well, there's 15 of 18 from the line and Illinois good too. They're 13 of 15 from the stripe. They're fighting a lineup. Smaller Fletcher Lawyer, and Lawyer's going to pick up the foul. So back to the line goes Illinois. Yeah, so they're doing basically, Rob, an offensive defensive substitution here with a big foul. Well, that, that's a foul that Fletcher Lawyer took, like they have two team fouls. Yeah, I just don't know why he would reach in there like that. He's giving Damas points. He's a 90% foul shooter. You know you've got the backside help. That they've jumped that high side all night long. Trey Coffin runs right there. Illinois has been able to take advantage of some of these Purdue mistakes here, and it's gotten them back into the conversation here. And tonight, 9 of 10 for Marcus Damask at the charity strike. Illinois trying to come back and pull off a huge win here on the road, but that will not help their case. Kaufman ran from deep. And Quincy Garrity just daring him to shoot it. Craig Kaufman ran is 46% from three on the year, but low volume, and that's a massive shot for Purdue. Well, they got him on their feet, and that will sit him back down. Marcus Damask, and then he saluted the crowd. And a couple of boos rained down. Maybe that jump starts his three-point shot because he has been ice cold from three. A good shooter throughout his career. And 36 percent in his tenure at Southern Illinois, but just over 20 percent this year from deep for Demas. Ed, good catch. Wide open. Braden Smith off the side of the iron, knocked out. That went off of Illinois again. He said it his best game of the year. Kaufman Ren just he's been everywhere. Good ball movement and just the, the little extra effort. If he doesn't go for that ball, it's just a defensive rebound for Quincy Garrier. But because he goes, put that little bit of pressure and that ball ricochets off the leg of Justin Harmon. Needy battling in there for position. Lance Jones pulls. And a rebound of Coleman Hawkins. 
Illinois, a chance to get it back to single digits. Awaiting the under four media timeout here at Matthew Arena. Here comes Daiso. He's got the whole side. Using that pivot foot, and we've got a nine-point game. That is high-level stuff right there from Marcus Damask. Illinois just clearing out the entire right side of the floor. He's got Fletcher Lawyer, a matchup that he likes, and he uses that pivot to just free himself at the rim. New life for the ninth-ranked team of the country. And they're trying to get it in there to Edie, but he has been covered up. And a whistle and a foul as Lawyer started to drive. And we've got our final media timeout. Illinois, with the toughness to hang in here. Marcus DeMath starting to wheel and dig. Guys with experience that were savvy players. And he got that in DeMath. He got it in Justin Harmon. And he got it in Quincy Garrier. Three good ones. But he also got three guys that are looking at this season. And their main objective is to win. And I think that that is, when you're looking at the portal and trying to build chemistry, and you can get guys that are as talented as these three Illinois transfers, but also guys that are willing to sacrifice for the greater good of the team, that's, that's when you're really cooking. Now Brad Underwood has talked repeatedly about how connected this Illinois group is. Of course, facing a lot of adversity without their star, Terrence Shannon, the last few games. To mask another nice finish. It's not complicated about what Illinois is doing right here. I mean, they're just letting Marcus Marcus to mask kind of play his game, find what he wants, get to that right hand, and do his thing. Now they're heating up the basketball a little bit. <laughs> Illinois has made their last six shots here to get back in the game. And a travel. Go back to that Damask bucket here, Robbie. Here comes the ball screen, and he got the switch with Ethan Morton. He is so patient. The footwork has been on full display here in the second half. Right? If I'm Illinois, I don't know why you go away from it. Get your switch and tell Marcus to go get a bucket. 26 points for Damask. He's looking for more. Morton got a hand on it. Took it away. So what a play by Ethan Morton. And a guy from Matt Painter who has seen his role reduced here as a senior, but coming off the bench and making a big play there, and then a careless foul on Quincy Garrier. This is just one-on-one. -on -one. Marcus Damask and Ethan Morton. Look at the quick hands there. Damask may be a little bit casual with the ball, and Ethan Morton able to take advantage and take it from him. That was the fourth foul, by the way, on Quincy Garrier, and it sends Kaufman Rim to the line. There's the first miss of the, at the line tonight for Kaufman Rim, but a lane violation on Luke Goody will give him another chance. Wow. Oh, he came in from the top. Yeah, good. He was outside the yard. But they get a break as Coffin Rim misses anyway. Still a nine-point game as we approach two minutes. The mask has been the head of the snake tonight for Illinois, especially here in the second half. Now it's Harmon. Penetrates. Lost it. Saved it, though. Shot clock at five. The crowd wanted to travel. And after all of that, Hawkins is going to get fouled by Mason Gillis. That's a really smart play there by Colvin Hawkins. He could have forced one up, but with the shot fake, gets his defender off his feet, and put the onus on the officials, draws tons of contact, and he'll go to the line for two. Matt Painter has got Zach Eady up and off the bench with those four fouls. We'll check back in here as Illinois gets it down to eight.
Coleman Hawkins. Longest tenured Illinois player, one of two. And Purdue gets the rebound. Well, Hawkins got a hand on it, knocks it out of bounds. Purdue has just not been as sharp, I would say, the last eight minutes or so. I mean, they've let Illinois some of their miscues and, and credit Illinois for taking advantage but even on that pass it's a little bit sloppy I think a good timeout by Matt Painter to, to talk this over here comes a great player and now gets a chance to showcase his talents on the biggest level here well, here we go almost 90 seconds left as Illinois tries to come back from down 21 now at eight Braden Smith is really close to that half for long Gillis thought about it now. Edie getting tangled up inside. They're going to call the foul on Illinois' Justin Harmon. Yeah, Harmon, he, he's just fighting for his life. He just wraps him up. And he's giving up a foot. He's giving up a foot and 100 pounds is yeah, Justin Harmon. It is pretty wild. He's 6'4", 200, going against 7'4", 300 pounds. And Edie misses the front end. Now the bucket here, and things get interesting. They're not matching up. Hawkins driving, needs some help. We had Gary A, but his head was just turned. Hawkins missed him. And here goes the mask. Into the corner, Harmon with a shot fake. Looking to create some space. Shot clock at five. Almost thrown away. Goody left it short. And a big rebound by Gillis. And a collision inside with Gary A. And Jones said because he undercut him. But to me, Lance Jones is in the process of blocking out. So I, I don't know what you're, you're telling your guards to do there. Right? Obviously just a huge call. Yeah. And Gary A gets it back down to a two-possession game here with still 53 seconds remaining, and it's Illinois basketball. And Edie with those four fouls back to the bench. And Robbie, six-point game is a lot of time oh, for Illinois. Illinois gets a bucket here and some real pressure on Purdue. Hawkins in the corner. And he traveled. Boy, what a huge turnover for the senior Coleman Hawkins. This gets the happy feet there. And what a missed opportunity for Illinois. Now Edie back in there, the offensive defensive switch. Keep in mind, both teams in the double bonus. Jones working his way out of trouble. And now, when does Illinois foul? I don't think you can run this down to, to 20, but now I, I guess they're going to play it out. But this this will take the game clock down to 20 seconds. Yeah, Brad with a two possession game. And he told him, don't foul, just play it out. Shot clock at five. Here goes Lawyer. Had a quiet night. That clock reset. I don't think he hit the rim. I don't think it did either, but play on. They need something quickly. And Hawkins provides it. A huge triple. And it's down to a one possession game with 12.1. Coming back into play off the inbounds. What a top 10 showdown it's turned out to be. They do get it into Smith. And there is the foul with 9.1 left. You said it. He's a good foul shooter. 78% this year for the sophomore. A Purdue team that was ranked number one, then lost up in Evanston to Northwestern December 1st, fell back, but now back in the top spot, trying to hang on here. And a furious comeback from ninth-ranked Illinois. Smith calmly knocks down the first. 
where you want your point guard demanding the ball. He, he was not going to be denied there. And he is always cool as a cucumber is number three. Plays well beyond his years. Purdue trying to hang on for what would already be their fourth top 10 win this season. What a schedule it's been for the 13-1 Boilermakers. And they've got a five-point lead. Damask races it up. Drives inside. Wild shot. Good defense. No whistle. And Purdue escapes.